Well, we're not all made the same way, right? So it's sort of somewhat silly to think that all diets will work the same way with our body. What works for you may not work for me and vice versa. So joining us to talk about how we can sort of test your nutritional plan is Dr. Sabrina Favi. Dr. Favi, what an interesting topic today. I know, I love this, nutrigenomics. Right, so, okay, so uh, this makes sense, right? Everyone's DNA is different. So how does that relate to our health and diets and how we understand what's going on and what will work internally? Right, and so we've been seeing this more and more with treating medical diseases. We know that if you take, let's say, a, a blood pressure pill, it may work in helping bring one person's blood pressure down and not necessarily another. And so there's genetic variants that make us more or less likely to perhaps actually respond to a pill. And so there's no difference when it comes to what we eat. There's certain genes that we're finding make you more or less likely to actually, let's say, lose weight. Like a certain diet, like an all protein, high protein rich diet may make your friend lose weight. But when you do it, it doesn't make you lose weight. Why? It might be your genes that are actually accounting for this and so now this field is expanding and growing. We have over 20 to 25,000 genes that make up our DNA and presently the tests that are available only really can test for a couple of them which we know may guide us as to whether you can actually process certain fatty foods better than someone else or actually take up more calcium better than someone else etc. Hmm. This is such so interesting because I just had this conversation with one of our producers she was trying like the paleo diet or something she goes I'm not losing any weight I'm gaining weight which so that makes sense. So if we do this nutritional genetic testing, what are some of the other things that it could tell us about us specifically? Right. And so, for instance, some people have chronic iron deficiency and they eat a lot of iron. They actually go and eat meat, even though they don't necessarily like meat to try to get that iron intake. And they end up finding out that it's actually a gene that doesn't allow for their body to absorb the iron. So they may be better fit trying to get the iron a different way. Huh. Or calcium, for instance. Some people just can't necessarily absorb calcium as well as others. And so then this actually has an effect on our bone density. And so when we get older in life, we're more likely to have hip fractures, which can actually put us at risk for death. And so it has greater implications than just, you know, losing weight uh, or being overweight. It has an implication on our overall health. And right. so these alterations can not only help us lose weight when we want to, but can actually have a benefit for our overall bone health, as well as our heart health uh, and, uh, and other organs, truly. Okay, so really quickly before I let you go, where do you get this kind of testing? How much does it roughly cost? I know, so it's tough because this is an area that is growing and developing still. Right now there's a lot of DNA testing that you can get online where they basically have you spit some saliva into a bottle and you send it out. But now there are more sophisticated clinics. There's one in Santa Monica, for instance, that just focuses on this. Hmm. Insurance companies don't cover it, um, but that's where the limitation exists. But if you are willing to pay a hefty amount of change, you can go to these kind of private clinics that have nutritionists go over your DNA testing that you find and then make certain recommendations based on what you can process and what you can't process. Yeah, well, this could definitely be the future. I mean, a couple years ago, mapping your DNA for medical purposes cost several thousand dollars and now it's cost several hundred. So now it's mainstream. Right. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. Dr. Fabi, great topic. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jen.